Everyone is already waiting inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's join them! Please, wait a moment. Before attending the meeting, I hope you can promise me one thing. What do you need? Promise me that you won't commit to anything too reckless. Hmm. What do you think? Okay. We already discussed things a bit. Hey, where have you been? I've missed you two. Are you ready? Very well. Are you sure this is gonna work? I gotta admit, it's bold. Color me impressed. Hmm. It's worth a try. The point of discussion is to arrive at a solution. Let's cut the small talk and move to the next point. You're finally done. I have some other stuff to take care of. Catch you all later. Come on, don't give me that face. I know what you're going to say. That's what I wanted to hear. Well, Traveler, Paimon, judging from your expressions, the meeting must have been quite productive. You can tell? I'm not that good at scheming a strategy, but I can sense people's emotions. Uh, Paimon's a little worried. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. To be honest, I feel the same. But you're already some of the most capable people I know. <laughs> Candace gave us a compliment. Your deeds speak for themselves. Candace, we stayed behind to tell you that, although you won't be coming with us, we'll be sure to remember your words. I'm very glad to hear that. I've said the same thing to everyone here today, as I said to you when you arrived. Only when you're saved can the plan be successful. So please, you're welcome. And thank you for taking my advice. Good luck. With everything. I'll be here in the village praying for you. Hmm, sounds good. I'll go make some preparations. Okay. I'll hit them! Have you finished saying your goodbyes? Yeah, also... Yes, she did. But I think my point also bears repeating. Our plan is not child's play. We won't be able to achieve anything if we're simply careful. We... I hope this is clear to you. Huh? Shouldn't you be saying something more cheerful to boost our morale right now? Didn't we already do that during the meeting? You can never have enough words of encouragement. In that case, Candace can cuddle you to your heart's content while I continue to remind you of the seriousness of our situation. We all have our jobs to do, after all. It's like how some people can be put in charge of logistics while others will fight on the front lines. Hmm. Speaking of the front lines, you don't look anything like a soldier. Of course. Compared to the mercenaries, I'm merely a feeble scholar. But the advantage of not being a mercenary is that I get to stay in a safer place and offer my strategic insight. Just think about that mercenary who lost his mind. Well, being a scholar is also a high-risk occupation. I'm not like the rest of them. This guy. <laughs> Paimon still remembers when those mercenaries in Port Ormos called you a lunatic. <laughs> All intellectuals are lunatics in the eyes of fools. Hmm. That Do you remember the record we saw in the King Deshret ruins? 
It mentioned forbidden knowledge. You have a good memory. Forbidden knowledge has the power to drive people insane, but this fact has never been shared with the public. Even I, who has worked in the academia for some time, was never once informed of this. I think those mad scholars and mercenaries we encountered may have all fallen victim to the corrupting qualities of forbidden knowledge, but the academia has always held a different view. They have always believed that symptoms of madness are a side effect of human contact with divine knowledge as mere mortals. Come to think of it, perhaps the academia has also never understood the true nature of the withering, Elazar, and the sandstorms. Don't you think what is happening right now across Sumeru is rather similar to the forbidden knowledge pollution that occurred in the desert thousands of years ago? But Paimon thought that Ermin Soul's disease is what caused the withering in the sandstorms. At least, that's what Tainari told us. Wait a second. Ah, you've connected the dots. The cause of Ermin Soul's illness may precisely be the pollution from forbidden knowledge. But if that's the case, what should we do? Wait. Why do you think Lesser Lord Kusanali would have a solution to this situation? You mean, it's related to the scene you saw when you passed out in the Avidia Forest? That whole... the world for... Hmm. In that case, it's imperative that we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. To make sure we're still on track, I would like to check on the state of some of our preparatory work. Where are we going? To an Aramite base. Let the wind lead. Oh, you made it. Huh? What are they doing here? I gave them some technical work to do. Ah, it's the scribe. And is that the traveler I see? How's the work going? Ah, yes. We have fixed the devices according to your instructions. One of them is already ready for use, while the others are still under repair. Aren't those devices for can knowledge extraction? What are you doing with those? Look here. Are you going to put more weird stuff into his head again? What's that look on your face? Are you scared? Paimon's a little scared, but very, very furious! Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting response. Anyway, we're not going to use this just yet. As I mentioned during the meeting, this knowledge capsule contains a decree I drew up in the past. Traveler, I want you to record something into this capsule. Do you believe we can save Lesser Lord Kusanali? Good. Conviction is the most important part of all of this. Now, please get ready and put on this device. You want us to record our conviction into the knowledge capsule? Yes. Uh, Paimon is still really worried. I understand. But trust me, Paimon, this is something we have to do. Because, to achieve this impossible task, it sounds like you'll need to fool your own heart first. Hmm. Paimon can see the point you're trying to make. Imagine this. We have orchestrated our plan and successfully rescued Lesser Lord Kusanali. As a result, we have changed Sumeru's entire political landscape. Everything went without a hitch, and everyone recognizes and praises our achievements. Now, open your eyes. Here. What's this? Read it out loud. It's done. Is your head okay? Does anything hurt? It's just a recording. 
there should be no negative effects. But what was the point of doing this? And that's perfectly fine. In any case, these capsules aren't meant to be used by you. Huh? Have you forgotten? Our plan needs to account for those who have long relied on the Akasha. You may find it hard to believe, but for those people, everything the Akasha transmits to them is nothing short of absolute truth. Imagine if you've been using a device like the Akasha since the day you were born. After all that time, what do you think you'd become? Uh, a fool? A machine? A slave to orders, and that's why rules are so important. In addition, those who understand the rules can delineate boundaries and identify gray areas. Hmm. But why would you need to identify the gray areas? You could say that those kinds of ambiguous zones can be very... interesting. Things you're interested in are really out there. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. I'm going to take those two to work on some small projects. You can head to Caravan Rebot and start preparing for the next step. Small project? We are going to tinker with the Akasha Terminal and make a few... modifications. I thought we agreed on a plan. The plan is too radical and carries a high risk for casualties. But it's still the best plan we have. I did. And that's how I saw the danger behind these so-called advantages. Huh? Why are you guys arguing? My friend, you're just in time. What? We agreed to work out a plan at the meeting. As mercenaries, you're familiar with the local environment. So you'll take care of the specifics. Had I known all Haytham would give you those kinds of suggestions... Look, you already know that we're all on the same side here. Mercenaries place a lot of importance on their bonds of friendship, but also will not hesitate to make sacrifices if they deem the situation to be sufficiently dire. <sighs> I'm sorry. Seems you really do understand the ways of the desert. Traveler, Paimon. This is also something. Rahman's plan is to have me work with the Caravan Reebok guards, in my capacity as a Matra. Wait! How can we work with the guards? We can't get through that wall easily, remember? My plan will clear us of any possible suspicion, and also let us enter the city as a big group. That also sounds like something Al Haytham told you. Doesn't Al Haytham know how dangerous this plan is? Of course he does. He told me. There is no perfect plan, but this can get the job done. He also said that with the help of Sino and the Traveler, our chance of success would increase. I never blindly trust anyone. If I make the arrests alone, I can control myself and prevent you from getting hurt. To make the whole thing more convincing, I'm okay with the deaths of enemies. <laughs> I can't believe a mantra would actually care about us. I've lived a hard life. I've always treated my allies with honesty and respect. Now oh, you're making this hard for me. Hey, is there something we can do to help? <laughs> I knew you would say that. Hmm. We can help fight some of the mercenaries, which should reduce the number of times you'll have to struggle directly with the guards. Sino, on behalf of my people, I we have no fear of casualties because we crave the spoils of victory. So please. Well, now that you've put it that way, but remember, you need to follow the plan and not do anything reckless. Since you and I both recognize the significance of this operation, there should be no more animosity between the followers of the Dendrowarkon and those of King Deshret. Ep okay, you. The guards should be stationed in the courtyard nearby. You can find them there. Boring! Guards! General Mahamatra! To... to what do we owe the honor? Keep your voice down. This is a secret operation. 
I'm going to arrest a large criminal gang near this location. According to the Academia's Guide and Regulations on Secret Operations, I have the right to ask for the cooperation of Caravan Rebot. Ah, of course, of course. Mahamatrasina's order is the Academia's order. But who exactly are you planning to arrest, and how many people are you expecting? There are a squad of Aramites whose number is comparable to Ein El Akhmar. As many as Ein El Akhmar? This should definitely be classified as a joint operation. Then I suggest that you report this to your superiors as soon as possible. Got it. Please wait a moment. I'll contact them immediately. Because this is work. Because I trust... Paimon can't believe you're still in the mood to chat. This whole thing has Paimon scared stiff. Aren't you even a little worried? What if these guards already know that you have betrayed the Academia? Even if that guard doesn't know? We discussed this, remember? The Caravan Rebot operation is of great importance. But don't worry. The guards there shouldn't know that Sino has stepped down. How can you be so sure? First, the other Matra still don't know why Sino has left, which proves that the Academia has been covering up the matter. Second, this is a crucial moment for the Academia's God Creation Plan. If something were to happen to the General Mahamatra, it's bound to attract a lot of unwanted attention, no matter how you look at it. They don't seem interested in sharing the news of Sino's departure. A reasonable inference. Which brings us to our next issue. I'm sure some of you have been wondering if the prediction function of the Akasha will affect our operation. The Akasha is still in operation, so I must remain on high alert. Actually... Considering the power of the Akasha... I've given that a lot of thought. If you remember, when you first came to Aru Village, all your actions and roots were predicted by the Akasha. It even gave that bot. Things like that never... Hmm, that's true. But w Look at it from a different angle. Because my personal data has been entered into the Akasha. That's true. But the key to this question is... Haven't you ever thought about it? Just how can it do this in the first place? Because the Akasha controls the entirety of Sumeru. The Academia firmly believes that all human actions can be explained through logic. By sorting and analyzing entered data, the Akasha can derive behavioral logic. However, at the risk of sounding like an advocate for fallacies, can everyone truly be considered logic? Emotions are part of our behavior. Hmm. Sino, in the past, you've always worked alone. In the app, decisive and principled, you were used to solving problems alone. That's why the Akasha could figure you out. But now, you've joined a team. Our thoughts and logic have intermingled, and the Akasha lacks data on these interactions. So, in my opinion... Huh, makes sense to me. <sighs> Is that so? I guess there are things that even the Akasha cannot calculate, and people will not be forever trapped by the past. Next time, pay attention during our meetings. <laughs> Will do. Just remember to stay vigilant. Ah, footsteps! General Mahamatra, we were not expecting your presence here. I'm the security officer of the Grand Deshret Desert District. My name... Mm. This is my assistant, the Traveler. He will be working with me. Beep! Construct! What a great honor to meet you. Your golden hair is as bright as the sun. And uh, is this the latest technology from the Academia? Have you made a decision regarding the matter I mentioned to your subordinate? It seems to be a dire situation, so of course you will have our full cooperation. There's no need for flattery. <clears throat> yes, sir. Take your most elite platoon and follow me to the eastern side of the district. Understood. <sighs> Ma Hurry! Bring them! In two days, we will engage Rahman's Aramites and capture all of them. Any questions about the time or location? None at all, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Maybe hanging around the General Mahamatra isn't so bad after all. Everyone's so respectful towards us. This is all due to the absolute authority of the Akadi. Get ready.
reduced to just time for the operation. Let's go meet Sino in the desert. <laughs> Wait a moment. Ah! Oh, it's you. You're my assistant, remember? Being my assistant, you must stay with me. Now let's head over there. It's General Mahamatra and his assistants. We meet again. Huh. You're here early. It's to show how important we think the operation is. Since this is a big case for the academia, we are prepared to give it our best. I'm glad to hear your sense of resolve. They are our only leads for the case. Understood. Everyone! The Aramites are approaching from the- Make preparations and be ready for combat! Halt! Oh? What a warm welcome! What do you want? Judging from those shiny weapons in your hands, it seems like you're not interested in a deal. Ramon, the Academia has caught wind of your smuggling and illicit sales. Who are you supposed to be? A matra from the Academia? <laughs> I can't believe you came all this way just to catch us. I'm not here to talk. Oh, nobody's given me this much time of day since I became a mercenary. <laughs> Brothers! For that slight, let's wash our blades with their blood. Gather! To order guide you! Is order. It's over. Ah! We have subdued them. The operation is now over. All Aramite mercenaries and related personnel in the area have been arrested. Ah! You pitiful Dendro Archon dogs! <laughs> I'm afraid you'll regret it first. King Jeshred will curse you! Silence! Oh! Ah! Uh... Restrain them and take them back to Caravan Rebot. Count their numbers and send them to the Academia as instructed by the General Mahamatra. Yes, sir! Mahamatra Sino, I will now take my leave. Understood. You are dismissed. There they go. Let's talk elsewhere. Part of the plan went really well. Yes. That's fantastic. And that punch you gave Ram on there sure looked convincing enough. Once we're done here, I'll return to Caravan Rebot and oversee the group's transport. Yeah, you're. Th <sighs> Let's go join up with her. Speaking of which, is it real? I have a very close relationship with Tainari. If we need help, Tainari, get ready for the next.
It's about time. Didn't you say our part of the plan is the most important of all? And here you come rolling in late. In the time it took you to get here, I already did five laps around the place, down seven drinks, and even did some clothes shopping. Uh, sorry. We didn't mean to keep you waiting. <laughs> I just wanted to fix your attitude and rub it in a little. After all, you took your sweet time getting here, and we've got important stuff to take care of. <laughs> I just like seeing that serious look on your face. All joking aside, I'm glad you're here. Uh, but where should we start? Our responsibility is to get a status update on the Fatui Harbinger known as the Doctor. Dealing with an institution that controls all of Sumeru is already hard enough. If the Doctor were to crash the party, it would be next to impossible for us to... Yeah, we sure don't want him showing up. Right? Hearing his name just reminds me of those stuffy old geezers in the academia. I'd rather not have to deal with someone like that. According to the plan, we should first go to Pardis D.I. and ask for Forest Watch. If all hate them in Sino sources are solved, so we'll find Tyno. The sages have placed spies everywhere. <laughs> you should be honored. But Paimon thought mercenaries would do anything for- That's certainly true. Uh, how much more do you want? Hmm, how much do I want? Hey. How about paying me with a smile? What do you say? I haven't seen you smiling much recently. If you ask me, someone like you must look lovely when they smile. Come on, can you smile so that I can be less worried? <laughs> Looking good! I hope this pretty smile will become our lucky charm. There are many kinds of smiles. Let's go. Traveler, Paimon. And you are? Hey there. This is our friend Dia. She's an Aramite mercenary. A mercenary? Hmm, you must have some big news for me. It's something really important. Please help us out. All right. Then follow me. This place is better. We won't be disturbed by any passerby. Okay, what is this important thing you want to ask me? The doctor, huh? He's that strange-looking Fatui Harbinger with the mask! Yes, I know him. Uh, actually, he left Party's D.I. just a little while ago. Uh, he left already? Yeah, he came looking for me. Can I ask what it was about? Sorry to ask you like this after having just met. For now... All we can share with you is that your friend Sino is working with us. Sino, you say? Hmm. I see. So that's why he hasn't been at the Academia. Okay. I will answer your questions and will assist you any way I can. <laughs> Sino's name really does work wonders. Despite having just met you, I can sense that you're the serious type. You don't need to tell me anything you don't want to. The Harbinger you mentioned came to me because he wanted to take the scholar Hypasia away with him. Hypatia? Why would he want her? And what do you mean by take away? Is he planning to leave Sumeru? Yes. He told me his return to Snezhnaya is imminent. <sighs> so you mean... You're leaving this place soon? Indeed. Otherwise we could have perhaps talked a little more. I was just about to set out when I remembered something important. To that end, I made a final trip to Pardis D.I. Let me ask, have you been taking care of a scholar by the name of Hapasia? Your sources are accurate. No doubt because you recruited many informants. Forgive me for asking, but how's the treatment coming along? Given the way you're asking, I assume you have something to say. Since you asked, I'll be frank. I would like to take Hapasia to Snezhnaya. <sighs> It's incredibly difficult to transfer a patient. As a scholar yourself, shouldn't you at least be aware of this? Oh? I can't believe your utter lack of faith in me. 
to the point of even questioning my general level of knowledge. Well, you're the only one who's ever made such a request. I have my ways of keeping her safe during the journey. In addition, I can also promise that under my care, Hapasia will receive the most advanced and effective treatment. I will personally supervise her treatment and see to her recovery. Would that be agreeable to you? Hapasia was born in Sumeru and remains a scholar of the Academia. Her situation has not become dire enough to necessitate her transfer to another nation. Transporting her to Snezhnaya is risky and the potential benefits are unknown. As the person currently responsible for her treatment, I cannot possibly sign off on this transfer. Your suggestion is rude and reckless. I'll pass. I don't know much about the doctor, but after talking with him, I realized that, just like many other scholars, he possesses an aura of arrogance that I've come to detest. It's not so much that he's looking down on others, but more that he's so confident in himself and his abilities. I would never refer a patient to someone like him. I prepared myself for a protracted battle of wits. <laughs> I see, I see. Of course, your opinion makes perfect sense. <laughs> You're still young, but already quite stubborn. <sighs> Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't just let you off the hook like this. But unfortunately, I'm in a hurry today. What with Her Most Noble Majesty, the Tsaritsa, calling for our return. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. It's just as the Academia said. You're a responsible and gifted scholar. And that's also why people like you can never realize that sooner or later, everyone must pay the price for what they've learned. but feel like he's hinting at something unpleasant. He asked a question, yet didn't care for my answer. Perhaps I'm nothing but a talking rock in his eye. He never came off as malicious, but an utter lack of compassion permeated throughout our conversation. <sighs> I can barely believe it myself. I don't think I missed any details. Sorry, we can't tell you everything. We appreciate that you helped us anyway. I it's okay. I have an obligation to do so. To be perfectly honest, all of this may have started because of me. Recently, my master wrote several letters to me, asking me to return to the academia and assist him with his research. Hasn't he already asked you several times before? Yes, but there's something off about this most recent batch of letters. The handwriting and tone are both familiar, but some details have been omitted. My master will occasionally leave a few dots on the back of the letter. One dot means that he wrote the letter on a sunny day, and three dots stand for a rainy day. This has been a habit of his for many years but I didn't find any dots in his recent letters. I believe something may have happened to him. Huh. I get it. Since you are always at Gandarvaville, you would like me, someone already working at the Academia, to investigate this matter, right? I'd like to ask you to do that for me. If you can keep yourself safe, please withdraw immediately at the first hint of danger. I can do that. But I have a feeling it won't be that simple. The Academia has been working on a big project. I'm not quite sure what it is. Hmm. If the higher ups really. If the situation becomes critical, I'll leave. All right. We've got a plan. If that scenario comes to pass, you must be extra vigilant. I must say, I didn't expect a warning like this from the General Mahama. Being loyal to the Academia doesn't mean blindly doing whatever the sages say. On that note. The Academia, yes, but I suppose he's lucky. I see. This may well be. Also, if you run, I think this may. Okay, well, thank thanks. Thanks. Right. Oh, by the way, which way did the doctor go when.
That way. Gotcha. Thanks so much. We'll be on our way. According to Tainari, the doctor is leaving Sumeru soon. I want to check if the doctor was actually telling the truth. He also said that he'll take care of everything before he leaves. Just to be safe, let's chase him and see what we- But we have no idea where he went! We'll do it the mercenary way. <laughs> that Harbinger may have tried to cover his trail, but he still left some traces. Or perhaps he never even thought about concealing his whereabouts. Maybe that's just how arrogant he really is. Yep, we're headed in the right direction. Hmm, the traces are still fresh, but there's no sign of his entourage. Clearly, they're in a hurry. Hmm, it's just as I thought. We can stop here. I think I know where the doctor went. To the south of here is Port Ormos, which seems to be where they're headed. Port Ormos? They're going to leave by boat? That's right. Let's go to the port and have a look for ourselves. The port is crawling with- Let's keep going and see what we- Now this is a proper farewell ceremony for a Snezhnai and Harbinger. The Lord Harbinger is leaving. <sighs> I've still only seen him once or twice. I used to hold a position in our homeland, and back then, the doctor spoke in a very different way from the way he speaks now. Maybe the way people talk in Sumeru has rubbed off on him? It's always like that when you spend too long away from home. When he gets back to Snezhnaya, perhaps it will also take him some time to get used to the life there again. Huh? But, sir, that... that can't be right. No, no, I remember it like it was yesterday. Both his expressions and tones are now very different. Also, for some reason, he seems like he's all smiles now you must be mistaken nobody's supposed to look happy when they're on a business trip look thanks to dia's tracking shh the port is qu let's keep going now this is a proper farewell ceremony for a snezhnai and harbinger the lord harbinger is leaving <sighs> i've still only seen him once or twice Shh! The port is qu Let's keep going! Now this is a proper farewell ceremony for a Snezhnai and Harbinger! The Lord Harbinger is leaving. <sighs> I've still only seen him once or twice. I used to hold a position in our homeland, and back then, the doctor spoke in a very different way from the way he speaks now. Maybe the way people talk in Sumeru has rubbed off on him? It's always like that when you spend too long away from home. When he gets back to Snezhnaya, perhaps it will also take him some time to get used to the life there again. Huh? But, sir, that... that can't be right. No, no, I remember it like it was yesterday. Both his expressions and tones are now very different. Also, for some reason, he seems like he's all smiles now. You must be mistaken. Nobody's supposed to look happy when they're on a business trip. The doctor is on that boat. <laughs> so he told the truth after all. He is actually leaving Sumeru. 
Let's get closer and find a place to hide so we can observe him. This place will do. We can hide here while we keep an eye on the boat. It's time to say goodbye. Wait, is he the only person on the boat? Huh? You mean... And where are all the soldiers we saw on the port just now? They were all here just a few minutes ago. <sighs> so this was a trap. Wait, don't... Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. Oh no. They might be after Hapasia. Huh? What do you mean? I'm afraid that she's seen something that she wasn't supposed to see. If I were the Fatui, I would also- Oh no! Are you saying they're going to kill her? Let's go! Pardis Di is not a place you Fatui can just show up and do it. I believe we've already made ourselves quite clear. Our superior gave us permission. But you've been in Sumeru for some time already. Even the Grand Sage himself may not have the right to question our research. I've done my duty to inform you. Don't. It would seem that my words have fallen on deaf ears. You can keep trying to deny it, but coming to. With all due respect. Your baseless speculation. Well, you only have your harbinger to blame. I may be staying at party. It is still my duty to protect the peace and safety of the scholar. Then it seems our con. No one will lay a hand on you, Hapage. Are you alright? I'm fine. These Fatui have really crossed the line. Time to teach them a lesson. There's no use resisting. Give us Hapasia. Keep dreaming. The doctor's orders are absolute. Yeah? You've been someone's lapdog for so long that you don't know anything else now. I will have order. We're not getting anywhere. Traveler, Paimon, please go to Hepe. Got it! <sighs> Hepe is still here. Oh, that's good. So, you think this is over? What? The Balladeer is here? <laughs> I've missed that look of abject horror. You've given me that look every time we meet. But, uh, where is he? Uh, 
I can hear all of your thoughts, you know. Don't you remember? I already saw you the first time you came to Parties DI and made contact with Hypasia. I didn't need to do anything. It is her honor to be able to connect her consciousness with me. Uh, who are you talking to? It can't be the Balladeer, right? <laughs> I know you must be curious. I might as well tell you that I decided to enter Hypasia's consciousness the moment I sensed your touch. I wanted to observe you on a fool's errand. Uh, hey, Traveler! Wh what are you doing? My deification is nearly complete. All that's left now are just some final details. Do you understand? Even if you manage to rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali, it will be impossible for you to defeat a bona fide god like me. Is it wise to force that childlike god into a divine battle against me? Scholars consider the God of Wisdom to be the sum total of their faith. It's how they can justify reverence for a God as they construct it. But this also shows that humanity's worship of gods is a combination of blasphemy and exaltation. Yes, what is it? Yeah, I'm in a good mood, which is why I'm talking to you like this. What do you mean? <laughs> Those words almost make you sound like a friend who actually cares, but you're wrong. I'm different from all of you. I was born to become a god. My entire life up until this point has just been a meaningless routine. Just think about a sheet of paper. By itself, it holds no meaning. The content recorded on it is what gives it value. All I had recorded down before were some painful memories and boring human feelings. Indeed, to me, the sight of you fools in your futile struggles is far more amusing. Tell me, just what has this world done for you to protect it with so I'm connected to your consciousness, so I can hear what you're thinking and sense the depth of your determination. This is a good conversation we're having. So here's a word of advice. Let go of your misguided guardian complex. You know nothing about the truth. It'll be for your own good, as well as everyone else's. Humans are a species that can only find bliss in ignorance. Ah, you've seen my affection for her. If you were in my position, I think you'd feel the same way. She peered into my consciousness and saw my past. Someone like that is qualified to become my first follower. All gods need followers. So Hypasia has been chosen. Her appearance heralds my imminent arrival at the throne of divinity, while her worship shall become my glory. You're doubting me again? <laughs> no matter. Who wants to hurt my devout follower? The doctor wants to hurt my first... <laughs> How very amusing. Has anyone ever told you that you're not good at sowing discord? 
the doctor has never known his place. Even now, the puny human thinks himself capable of interfering in the business of the new god. You're still too naive if you think a few words will be enough to convince me to destroy the doctor. But I'm willing to give you a gift, just like my expression of affection towards Hapasia. It is an honor for you to be able to stand here and speak with me. As my listener, you will be rewarded. Both good things and bad things can be called gifts. After all, gods have never needed to be reasonable. chatted with you for a while. Oh, have the Fatui retreated? Hey, what happened to you? He's hurt. I'm fine. <sighs> Don't move. I've seen Aramites get struck by lightning before. Struck by lightning? We were fighting, and just as things started looking grim, the weather suddenly became extremely strange. Lightning started attacking every- Luckily, there were only two of us, and both of us were nimble enough to dodge most of the strikes. There were a lot of Fatui, though. With that, all the Fatui soldiers were forced to retreat. It's all right. My wound aside, you look like you've seen something unpleasant. Hey, didn't I tell you not- Just in case. Thank goodness. Hey, how about taking care of... I understand my condition. Ugh. The more you understand medicine, the worse of a patient you become. I know. They always think they can push through the pain. Oh, he sat down. Let me rest for a bit. <laughs> so that's what you were talking to the Balladeer about? Oh, but... <sighs> the Academia's... God creation plan. That sounds, uh, ambitious. I as long as I can enjoy every day with a drink in my hand, tasty food in my stomach, <laughs> I must be the least ambitious person who's ever. Don't say that. Don't mention it. Well, if nothing else, all this proves that the doctor really did have some urgent matter to attend to. Hmm, maybe the Fatui want to cover up some secret of the Balladeer. You said the Balladeer claimed that Hypatia has seen his past. So, what could... Have you noticed? The Balladeer is not happy with the Doctor's actions. So, if the Doctor was to show up again, would the Balladeer zap him with lightning? Based on what the Traveler has said, I think he would. In other words, we've succeeded. Yay! That's a big accomplishment! <sighs> Thank you for the help, Tainari. Make sure you wrap- Yeah, yeah. Okay, that wraps things up for us here. Let's continue to keep- You can just focus on your plan. Leave a patient to me. My wound isn't going to get in the way. The rain stopped. I don't concern myself with the weather.
All right, everyone is here. How did everything go? Any luck with your missions? Let's report back one by one. We've made the necessary modifications to the Akasha terminal. In addition, the props required are also ready. I'll go next. The Traveler and I went to Party's DI. Who is behind it? Uh, well, that's the tough part. What should I say, Traveler? The Fatui or the Balladeer? Hmm. <sighs> After some back and forth, we confirm that the Doctor has left Sumeru by boat. So, we've successfully removed the Doctor from the picture. Hmm. Good. Oh! Kainari also asked us to tell you this message! Tre hmm. Everything also went smoothly on to avoid alerting the quarry. I can't believe you actually got so many Aramites into Sumeru. It's all thanks to Ramon. It appears to have been very effective. Well, is that everything? Huh? Wait, you Well... What else is there? Shouldn't you end with some words of encouragement? Personally, I'd rather we all go home and get some rest. Hmm. I'll hate them, you... Oh, and if you wanted someone to say something to that effect, then I must reiterate that I'm here to strategize and not... So you should find someone more suitable. But I thought all of you Academia Big Shots were great speakers. Then I should remind you that I'm the scribe. I know that. The scribe is responsible for recording meetings. Fine, whatever. Well, Sino doesn't seem to be much of a talker either. Employer? Yep. The Traveler hired me. <laughs> That's right. So come on, boss. What do you have to say for the team? Yeah! Say something to boost morale! Huh? What are you all doing here? Oh! It's Nero! Hey, everyone. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Not at all. I was actually just about to go find you. <laughs> uh, judging from the group and all your serious faces, you were discussing something important, but you also look like you're up to no good. <laughs> Welcome, Nilu. Would you like to join us? Huh? Jo you mean, you also want to discuss something important? Yes. Something very important. Nilu. Are there any breaks in your performance schedule in the upcoming date? Huh? Wait, you're seriously inviting me? I... I can't believe my ears! You are truly the bravest and... Ahem! <coughs> oh, right. The Traveler and Paimon are not from Sumeru, but... <laughs> That's... I... I must admit that I'm a little sc- But I'll try my best for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Remember, believe in yourself. Okay, I'll get my friends at the Grand Bazaar to help us tomorrow. Just remember not to say too much. Yep, you got- All the preparations are done. Now, can we finally conclude this meeting? So, have you thought up what you'd like to say, boss? said a good night's rest before an operation can be the difference between success and failure <sighs> thankfully i've had my place to myself recently uh huh oh um nothing all right let's all go home and get a good night's sleep so okay so i guess that means it's time to say good night now yep Thank you. 
Academia's near Garbahage. We can finally put our plan into action. Oh, hey, them should be waiting for us. Let's go to the Academia and find him. Hello, you two. Uh, not really. Hyman got too nervous thinking about today and didn't fall asleep until the sun was almost up. What about you all, Hayden? Naturally, I slept just fine. Y you just want to show off how calm you are. It's crucial to dissipate any tension before... The only thing you're doing is being annoying! Anyway, do you need me to go over the game plan again? Our target is Grand Sage Azar's office. Everyone in the Academia knows that's where the Grand Sage's console is. Many restricted commands and operations are executed via that console. You know, Hyman's been thinking, what kind of technology could let the Sages imprison even a god? That isn't something they could have accomplished with their scholarly talents alone. In the Sanctuary of Suristhana, there's a device of Greater Lord Rukadavata's that she once used to isolate herself while meditating. 500 years ago, the Grand Sage at the time modified the device so that it could no longer be controlled from the inside. They were effectively trapping one god with the power of another. So... Uh... Don't forget, today is Nyagarbaha Day. The Sages and Core Academia personnel are busy loading the latest batch of research to... All the Darshan's researchers have their noses to the grindstone. When the Grand Sage leaves his office to supervise the entering process, that's our cue to access the console and free the Denger Archon. Well, yes. That's just the visible side of our plan after- If precedence holds, the Academia should have already started preparing for Nyagarbahad. Everyone should be in position. Let's go. Uh, so are we just gonna walk in through the front door? Yes. Were you expecting a stealthier approach? I... Paimon can't think of a good comeback. Scribe? Please wait. Are you Scribe Alhatham? <laughs> That's me. Is something the matter? Uh, uh, no. I was just surprised to see you here. I had heard that the sages were looking for you not long ago, but I didn't know what for. And, um, also, please don't bring outside guests into the academia. Outside guests? How did you arrive at such a conclusion? Your groundless inference shames the Haravatat Darshan. What? What did you say? I'm the top student in Haravatat, and I earned third place at the last Inter-Darshan debate. That wasn't my intention. As your Haravatat senior, I just assumed that you possessed a greater aptitude for critical thinking. Look, based on what you already know, the purpose of my return and the reason they're here should be obvious. Is that so? Wait, the sages search for you? A blonde-haired traveler? Outside guests? So, from the start, the sages weren't looking for you, but this traveler? And you were gone from the academia for so long because... Hey, shh. Yes, you've proven yourself as the top student in Haravatat. I surmise you've arrived at the correct conclusion. As I expected. Please, forgive me. It's nothing. All right. Thank you for your contributions to the Academia, Scribe. Uh, what the heck just happened now? What did he just guess? I'm afraid I don't know either. You have no idea? Mm-hmm. He convinced himself of whatever truth he came up with. That is the so-called pride of a scholar. Nowadays, the Academia is rampant with this type of scholar. Wow. So there are special ways to deal with smart people. We shouldn't waste any more time. It would... Is 
Is this the Academia's library? Indeed. Known as the House of Dana, it is quite possibly the most extensive special collections library in Tavat. Uh, there are a lot of students going through here. Is it really okay just to waltz right in? The Academia marches to a fast beat, especially since it's Nagarbaha Day. Just act natural. What's this platform for? It's a lift that Academia personnel use to access higher floors. Are we gonna take it then? Th no, not right now. We can't guarantee that we won't run into the Great Sage. Let's step back and observe for now. You think the Grand Sage will exit from there? And after he does, we'd sneak past him? Who knows? However, if we can confirm Azar's current location, our operation will be mo Allow me to offer you a hint. If you wish to know his location, look behind you. Do not tell me you believed the Academia would not grow suspicious of you after such a prolonged absence. An eyewitness had informed me of your whereabouts, so I came to personally welcome you. Great Sage, I didn't expect you to care so much about me. I'm truly flattered. I'm sure. But compared to you, I am far more interested in these two unexpected guests. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? It's a pity that only now have I been afforded the opportunity to formally meet two of Sumeru's most esteemed guests. I do apologize for my lack of decorum. Excellent. You immediately initiated discussion instead of attempting to prepare some perfunctory excuse. You clearly understand the situation at hand, and have no intention of making a reckless stand. The foot traffic here renders this place unsuitable for discussion. Please... Follow me to my office. This place is crawling with guards. There's no way out for us. All right then, Traveler. What did you wish to discuss with me? Today is Niagarbaha Day, so I still have many responsibilities to attend to. There is little time for idle chit-chat before I detain you all. Hmm. You seem to know quite a bit about our endeavors. If that is so, then you should be praising our great work, rather than using your trivial misgivings in a futile attempt to sway me. Trivial? Then tell me, what do the Fatui want from me? Pfft. <laughs> Worthless. Those are all completely worthless. Benefits. Divine power. These materialistic words do nothing but debase our great work. Creating a god. Yes, we are using human wisdom to create a god. If humanity cannot attain omniscience and omnipotence, then we shall create a god to reveal them. We shall regain a god's guidance at long last. Even Ermin's soul will be freed from its plight. For our nation of scholars, this is the ultimate aspiration. No cost is too great to realize it. You will never understand the rapture of having a god be born within your very hands. With your degree of knowledge, you cannot even comprehend such an emotion. Gods exist on a plane that far eclipses humanities. Lesser Lord Kusanali. What can she even do? Care for the people? Fend off sandstorms? Fabricate silly fairy tales? <laughs> These are but child's play for the academia. We are a people favored by Greater Lord Rukadevata. 
Though I may have personally not seen it, our forefathers bore witness to true wisdom. The ascension of the Lesser Lord has brought nothing but bewilderment to the scholars. They all ask, is that truly what true wisdom is supposed to look like? With that in mind, it is better to keep her isolated in the Sanctuary of S- What a pathetic justification! Do you really think that only the super smart or powerful should be able to call themselves gods? As per your judgment, Grand Sage, they are indeed dangerous individuals. Not only are they acting against the Academia, but their ideologies have the potential to lead scholars astray. Looks like there really was merit in my assignment. Alhatham? Are you talking about us? Anyway, I've brought them to the Academia as ordered, but it took some time and trouble. Oh, that reminds me. Here's the investigation report you had requested. It's a summary of my time spent with the Traveler, an array of information about him ready for your perusal. I'll hate them! So you're... You're still on the Academia side! We finally started to trust you! Hmm... Excellent. Detailed contents with no errors. I would expect nothing less than an immaculate report, as it is near Garbaha Day. I'll enter the information on you into the Akasha. Surely you know what that means. We'll be monitored, just like Sino. With the Akasha's calculation prowess, all of your actions will be predicted with an accuracy of at least 98%. Furthermore, your data will be updated in real time whenever new information presents itself. To put it into words you can understand, wherever you go, you will be walking under an invisible leash. This is Sumeru's greatest penalty for dishonest persons. Are you not familiar with the concept that great responsibility begets an equally great suspicion? In any case, you are Sumeru's most concerning external variable. Locking you down will greatly decrease the chance of any undesirable outcomes coming to- You're despicable! Despicable? Hmm, perhaps from your perspective, but I suppose you had mentally prepared yourselves for this, no? Your ploy. Uh... Lord Azar, I know what you're trying to say, but I've been following your plan this entire time. Why are you doubting me at this juncture? Huh, <laughs> must I delineate your entire plan? Very well, I will spell things out. First off. I received an eyewitness report that you were spotted with the Traveler at Caravan Rebot. However, you immediately departed for the desert and escaped surveillance range. Judging by the time, you all likely encountered the truant General Mahamatra in the desert. Am I correct? <sighs> Maybe Paimon shouldn't have mentioned Sino just now. The Academia had not received correspondence from its scribe for a prolonged time. You were also in the company of the Traveler, a close associate of Lesser Lord Kusanali and General Mahamatra Sino, who, with their instigation, what was the probability that you would betray the Academia? Rationally speaking, 50%, 70%? What do you think? Regardless, that's only a guess. Indeed, your boldness deserves praise. If I'm correct, you have a contingency plan to save Lesser Lord Kusanali and ruin our great work. Sneak into the Academia on Nia Garbaha Day, using Alhatham's status as the scribe. For there is a good chance that an opportunity to save the Lesser Lord will arise. Should your intentions be discovered, Alhatham will turn traitor, and as for Sino, According to the Akasha's calculations, he will soon return to the Academia and confront me in person. <laughs> You'll see me as a traitor regardless of what I say. Even if you impugn me, it would have little effect on you all. You misunderstand. Losing our scribe would irreparably damage the Academia's regular operations and the development of Sumeru's future act. However, under the current circumstances, even that is trivial compared- You said that I betrayed the Academia, but you, Azar, you've betrayed all of Sumeru, betrayed its Archon. Hmm. So flight has turned to fight at long last. Well 
what do we have here? So you stole that divine knowledge capsule. Traitor. You traitor! <laughs> Even the most rational scholar will yearn for the power of a god in a moment of desperation. Aren't you doing the exact same thing as me, Althatham? Unfortunately for you, no god will lend you their power. Azor! <laughs> He has gone completely insane. Take him to the Matra and exile him to Aru village. Then find someone to take these two to the confinement room. I'll deal with them later. Grand Sage, we've finished all required preparations for Nyagarbaha Day. We may begin to enter the capsules now. Excellent. You may begin. She's worked up. <laughs> right, right! Paimon thinks... Apart from that, we still have yet another goal in the first stage of our operation, which is to send the Traveler to the confinement room. What? Why do we want to get him locked up on purpose? He's always been the person the Sages are most afraid of, as well once the Traveler is imprisoned, the Sages will likely think that everything is under control. And with their guard down, the next phase of our plan will have a much higher chance of success. <laughs> I can already see the pompous looks on their face. Oh, that's a super tricky plan. But Paimon still thinks it's not really worth it. That isn't the only reason, of course. According to the Academia Skull, that way they can't pry any... Even if we break into the Sanctuary of Suristhana, it... So the confinement room is inside the academia. I'll work with Raman scholars to make some modifications to your Akasha term. However, as for whether she'll actually wake up. No! No wonder you've been wearing your Akasha terminal today. Paimon thought they'd take our Akasha terminals when they locked us up in here. Hmm. Were they being careless? So what now? Sounds easy enough. We can finally talk with Nahida after all this time. There's a light flashing on your Akasha terminal. It's almost like... <gasps> the faster it blinks, the better the signal.
Nahira! Hey, Nahira! When did it first start? Oh, right. I want to become a worthy Archon. So I've kept studying, kept listening to my people and their hearts, kept looking for a way to save Vermin Soul. So I can catch up. Catch up to Greater Lord Rukutavata. But I'm stuck in the Sanctuary of Sir. The sages are creating a god to replace me. And I'm forced to lock my consciousness in this boundless darkness. Nahida! Nahida! Now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever actually listened to my own inner voice. Do Archons have them? Should Archons have them? Have I been doing the right thing? Am I really not needed? How do I really feel about all of this? It's so quiet here. Since you're the god of wisdom, you've known the answers to all these questions since the very beginning, haven't you? Who are you? You're right, though. I won't... I won't ignore my own voice anymore. Nahida! Nahida? Did you... wake me up? <sighs> Thank you. Why are you here? We're here to rescue you. Are you alright? I'm fine. It's just... When I think of everything that's happened to me... I feel really angry now. <laughs> you should have been angry ages ago. Nilu, are you sure about this? You're taking such a great risk. I'm sure, and I'm going. <sighs> but if anything happens, the few of us here may not be able to help you. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Zubair. You're so very kind. Nilu, how's it going? Definitely more than usual, but it's... Be it's okay, just focus on your... Pro <laughs> you sure know how to talk. Well, thank you both. 
Ooh, that's a... All right, let's get back to business. Nilu, we'll... I was planning on telling them something like, the academia's been conducting a weird... Oh, you couldn't think of anything better? Oh. <laughs> I think it sounds great. I'm counting on you guys. Don't worry, it'll be a piece of cake. Hey, Nilu. Sorry, it's great to see you, but I'm really busy right now. Do you want some candy? Vihar, thank you so much for... I'll pass on the candy, though. I cut back on sweets in the period leading up... <laughs> you have a point. The stage is cleared and everything's ready, so... Yeah, thanks to you. I'm really... <laughs> You're welcome. The honor's all mine, since I'll have such a great view of the show. I've never seen a performance like this. This is incredible. Yeah, but I heard that public performances like these have been banned. I can't believe she's doing this here. Grand Sage, there's some commotion outside. <laughs> How uninteresting. Issue the new Prohibition Act from the Akasha to the guards. They'll know what to do. Uh, do you think we should, like, stop her? Let's just watch for a little bit longer. Did you hear that? It sounds like a lot of guards just ran by. Does this mean the plan has moved on to the next stage? Yep, yep. It's great that everything seems to be going well, come to think of it. When did all Haytham replace the knowledge capsule that was about to be entered into the Akasha? Oh, so that's when he did it! Paimon was too nervous to notice. Speaking of, didn't all Haytham also yoink the Divine Knowledge Capsule from that mercenary leader in Port... Oh, it's a time-tested trick of his! <sighs> Why are we complimenting him? Yeah, he's smart and all, but he still makes Paimon's blood boil. <sighs> Let's review our plan for this stage again. Paimon remembers that Nilo's task was supposed to go a bit like this. Now that Lesser Lord Kusanali's consciousness has been forcefully sealed, the with the doctor's techno- How despicable of them to rely on such a person. But this is also our chance. I was originally asked to draft the knowledge capsule for the- It should be on the Grand Sage's desk right now, and will be entered into the Akasha during the next Niagarbaha day. Are they really going to stop all artistic performances? I'll make an identical knowledge capsule, but this time, I'll smuggle some misleading information into it. We only need to find an opportunity to switch the capsules. Once it's been entered into- The sages would definitely use that opportunity to announce the ban, and- Sure sounds cop. That's pretty clever. 
Can I just have one question? People who are used to relying on the Akasha become less inquisitive and their ability to distinguish truth from misinformation is significant. The Akasha will turn humans into machines. Yikes. Good thing I didn't wear it for long when I was working in Sumeru City. At first, I thought it was a good thing too. By the way, this plan still requires- Do you have someone in mind? Nilu of Zubair Theater. I know her really well. We can trust her. I'm kinda hesitant to ask her to participate in a dangerous plan like this, but we can ask her in person. All right. After the guards and the academia are gone. Then it'll be time for me and my stowaway brothers to shine. Here they come. Did you see that, Raman? They... After laying low in the city for so long, this is the moment we've been waiting for. <laughs> we couldn't do anything to him inside. With a lioness like you, the prey sure won't be able to run far. We still need to eliminate the guards as soon as possible. If we... Yeah, all they've done is to sit on their cushy salaries and twiddle their thumbs all day while we fought... And... Speaking of which, most of the guards following those blasts... Indeed. All right, let's each take a road and... You gave such an important task to that child. It'll be fine. Isak was so determined to help. Besides, even if he's caught, the guards would be too scared to do anything to him. You've got a point. Good luck. Outfit. Uh, hey, do you remember what you need to do, Isak? When oh, yeah, I remember. Of course I do. I I'm just a... <laughs> Relax. Don't think about getting caught. Even if that happens, we won't leave you behind. You only need to think about getting the guard's attention. Okay, got it. Hey, they're here. I can see the academia guard. All right, it's time, Isak. Why is there a guard over there? Did he already run ahead of me? Mm, this is different from our plan, but there's no time. I need to make a choice. Hmm. Let's have a look behind the house. What should I do next? Huh. Looks like nothing's here. A wasted time. <sighs> Luckily, he didn't check behind the tree. Hmm. The guard looks alert. What should I do next? Hey, stop! I saw you! Hmm. The guard looks alert. Doesn't seem like anything unusual's around here. <sighs> looks like the... Lesser Lord Kusanali is over there! Stop! What? Lesser Lord Kusanali? How did I not notice that? Uh, they found me! This is bad. Where should I go? Hey! Lesser Lord Kusanali is over there! Stop! What? Lesser Lord Kusanali? How did I not notice that? Uh, they found me! This is bad. The target suspected to be Lesser Lord Kusanali. Where did she go? How did she disappear? Did we lose her? Hurry up! Hey, why is your team here? Didn't we say to split up our search? Hurry, hurry! Huh? This place is... Why are you all here? Yeah, isn't it one heck of a coincidence? Everybody's here. 
What on earth is going on? I suppose that's all of you? Who are you? Did you set us up? What are you planning? <sighs> Phew, that was rough. I almost got caught. Little brat! So you're not actually Lesser Lord Kusanami. Who exactly are you all? Just some colleagues. Think of this as a business competition. After stepping into our traps, stop thinking of yourselves as hunters. An ambush? How's that possible? This is Sumeru City, but mercenaries from the desert somehow ambushed us! You've spent all your time hiding away in the academia. Hmm... This is odd. The Academia has quieted down after the conclusion of the Neogarba Day ceremonies. Where are the guards? What? Grand Sage, how may I be of assistance? I called for the guards. Why did you come? Uh, my, my apologies, Grant. Right now, all Academia guards have entered the city to perform the ordered arrest. I thought you knew. Arrest? Who? I have an ominous feeling. Uh, arrest Lesser Lord Kusanali. Lesser Lord Kusanali? You mean she has disappeared? Uh, yes. I wouldn't dare make up something like that. Right now, everyone is in a panic. What happened? Just what is going on? Lesser Lord Kusanali somehow escaped. Was it Alhatham and his party that... F That's impossible. The Academia is heavily guarded today, and any order to release Lesser Lord Kusanali would be strictly confidential. What manner of trickery did they employ? How could Lesser Lord Kusanali disappear into thin air? Disappear? Wait. How was the arrest order distributed to the guard? It was issued by the Akasha earlier today. Only you have the authority to send messages like that, so I... Let me check. <sighs> Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped from the Sanctuary of Surasthana. The Akasha indeed contains this information, and it clearly appeared in my mind. How did they bypass my permissions to issue this kind of message? Was it the report about the Traveler that Alhatham submitted? No. I specifically checked that knowledge capsule before entering it into the Akasha. Could... well, even if I figure it out now, it won't make any difference. Have you been to the Sanctuary of Surasthana to confirm that Lesser Lord Kusanali is indeed... Confirm? N no it, it may be a bit offensive to say this, but... Grand Sage, how can the information in the Akasha be inaccurate? What the Akasha decrees is fact. If we have to confirm the information and knowledge from the Akasha ourselves, then how is that any different from us learning that information ourselves? In the beginning, it was I who asked you to believe in the Akasha, to believe in the legacy left by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. N no Grand Sage. I'm merely confused because I believe in you. <laughs> Stay here and see if there are any suspicious people around. Y yes Grand Sage. Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped from the Sanctuary of Surasthana. <sighs> How can that be? Stop thinking about it. Stop. There must be a trick of theirs. As long as I personally confirm it. Ah! Impossible. That's impossible. There must be something wrong with my eyes. Oh. What a comical sight is our. <gasps> Once the Akasha has put certain thoughts into your head, even the Grand Sage can no longer see what's right in front of him. You all can only see the world in your mind, the one you think you know. And precisely because of this, you disregarded Lesser Lord Kusanali's existence. She has been a wise and worthy Archon. Sino, 
Have you been waiting for a chance like this? The Akasha predicted that you would return to the Academia to confront me. But I didn't expect it to turn out like this. No, you were blinded. Your faults stem from your reliance on the Ak I truly did not expect a proud person like you to cooperate with all- People change, Azar. Admit it. The Akasha can't predict my actions anymore. <laughs> then tell me. What have you found during your- You want to buy time? This- As for the investigation- So what? Did you do all of this so I would plead guilty in front of you, Je No. I want you to plead guilty. You once said that I had no standing to judge you. So now, how about judgment in the name of a god? hasn't heard any sounds outside for a while. Yeah, but aren't you scared that we might be locked up in here for the rest of our lives? <sighs> Thinking about it, at least Paimon has you. When Paimon thinks of Nahida being imprisoned alone... <laughs> here comes your savior. You two really owe me some big thanks. Thanks a lot. Need Paimon to rub your shoulders? Uh, n no, n no, that's, uh, I I'll pass. Are you ticklish? Ugh, now isn't the time to talk about being ticklish. Things in the city and on Sino's side are both going well. The guards that stormed out of the Academia are all taken care of. The Corps of Thirty is in charge of the city's def- As long as it doesn't break- That's probably because- The Grand Sage is in his- Sino forced him to release Lesser Lord Kusanali. He has no choice but to obey. So, hurry to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. Assuming not, we should have already rescued our Archon. Honestly, I didn't expect our ragtag bunch to do this well. We just came together last minute to save the Archon, you know? All right, you two better go. I still have to clean up some messes in the city. See you around. The damned will sooner die again than lay a hand on me.
They say it's nice to meet you. This is the first time we've met in real life. Before, we've only met in dreams, consciousness, or when I was in someone else's body. Thank you so much for coming to rescue me. But I also need to apologize. During this time, I did some self-reflection. My sense of inferiority and yielding to the academia led to all of this and created so much trouble for you all. We're here because you're a good Archon and one of our friends! <laughs> Thanks, you two. Amazing. So this is how it feels to walk out of that cage with my own body. It's like I just had an endlessly long dream. My concept of self has become so... <clears throat> but now doesn't seem to be the time to indulge in this feeling. Um... This is really embarrassing. You all just rescued an Archon, and now she needs your help to save her country. It's okay. With you here, I'm unsure that everything will work out. There's one more thing. What is it? For all the things the Academia did to me, and for all the folly it committed in the name of wisdom, as their Archon, I will make them pay. Ah, wow! That's the spirit! You're finally standing up for yourself and not letting people walk all over you! <laughs> I understand now. If you haven't even figured out how to be a caterpillar, how can you be a butterfly? Yes, true. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder how far along the Academia is with their god creation plan. We need to hurry and prevent- I need to make some preparations. Since I'm now free, I can establish a direct link to the Akasha and control it. First things first. I need to remove the restrictions that the doctor put on me in the Akasha. After that, I'll make some adjustments and revoke the Sage's permissions. After all, the Academia betrayed Greater Lord Rukadavata's trap. This might take some time. If we don't stop the go- We might as well prepare for a fight! When we're done, we can take a walk around. After all, we missed out on a lot of stuff when we were locked up. There's still a long road. You called?
How's it going, Nahi? I'm done with the parts that needed my involvement to complete. Although it's my first time working with the Akasha like this, its internal structure and operation procedures are easy for me to understand. Oh, also, this is for you. Huh? What's this little floaty thingy? It's a small device I put together just now. You can think of it as an upgraded Akasha terminal. You may not need it right now, but it should be helpful in certain situations. Wait! This thing has the same characteristics as Paimon! We're both small things that float! Aww. All the things that make Paimon special got copied! When Paimon appears with the Traveler from now on, people won't remember Paimon because she isn't unique anymore! <laughs> it's alright, Paimon. It can't replace you. It's only a flying device. But you're the Traveler's irreplaceable friend. <sighs> You're so good at comforting people, Nihit. Hmm? I was simply telling you what I feel to be the truth. I... Nahida, you're natural at this. What you just said made Paimon even happier. By the way, there's something I need to confess. Even though I'm the Archon and in control of myself again, I'm not very good at fighting. You may have heard that an Archon's power is derived from their people's faith. However, I'm not as well loved as Greater Lord Ruka Devata. If we get into a situation where combat is our only option, I'll have to count on you and I'll do my best to provide support. I'm glad I can rely on you. Hmm, so the God of Wisdom isn't good at fighting? That actually sounds about right. I've located where the false god is. Time is up. What is this place? Is this really the way we need to go? Wow. Who would have thought there'd be a place like this hidden right slap bang in the middle of the city? The sages wanted to realize their god creation plan without being discovered. The sage... Hmm. That's true. Judging from the structure here, the project is a huge undertaking. But this place doesn't look like it could have been constructed by the Academia alone. The Fatui under the Doctor sure didn't hold back. They provided a lot of technological su Yeah! Or else they wouldn't have been that generous. Is that it, though? I've always felt that this Doctor is different from the Academia Sages. He doesn't seem- Instead of being interested in the end product, it's like he's enjoying the experimental process. Hmm. The Fatui Harbingers are all such weirdos. So... So... This Fatui that they're trying to turn into a god. We had previously come into contact with his consciousness. He harbors particularly strong obsession. One is the desire for a gnosis, since he was created to be the vessel for one. The other obsession is probably related to his past. Paimon knows that he was a prototype puppet for the Raiden Shogun before he became a Fatui Harbinger. That's why he wants a Gnosis so badly. There's no way he'd willingly be a test subject. Now with that temper and ego of his... It sounds like you know the Balladeer quite well. I see. Tell me more about him and what he's like. The more we know now, the better we can plan for and react to any future situation. Ah, I see. All right, time to go. Let's get through here and meet him in person. Gather! Time to Higher, higher, be yes, on fire! <laughs> go on! Phew. Give me a my fury. Right. <laughs> 
Solidify! Order guide you! It looks like we can climb up these pipes! Seems all messed up. Let's go around and see if there's a way to fix it. It seems to have stuck. Let's continue. Stabilize! Crap, you'll get it! pay your dues, warm! Gather! Go as well! Not over! Stabilize.
gather. No more. This words. is order. Full as blood. Wind, hear me. Let's end this quickly. <laughs> Stabilize. I will have order. its operational status, we must prepare for the worst. The god they wanted to create is likely close to completion, or already completed. Oh no, what should we do? Paimon can't imagine how hard it would be to fight against a Fatui Harbinger with a Gnosis. Are you nervous, Paimon? If you really want to know, of course Paimon's nervous! Aren't you yes, I am. This is probably the first time I faced with a calamity of this degree since my birth. I feel not just nervous, but curious as- Curious? Curious about our fate. To me, everything we perceive in this world, everything and if it's a form of knowledge, however, only fate is about that which has- So to me, fate- That's also why I love observe- And now, I, I will personally experience- Ah, so that's what you mean. Paimon thinks she understands what you're feeling. Agreed. Okay, let's continue on. I can sense his aura from here. so eager for my birth. I remember you, Boor, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the traveler. Is he all knowing and powerful now, like greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. <sighs> so we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. This imposing aura... It really feels like a god! A body that 
capitalizes on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the Sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. Nahida wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature. The strife engraved upon a Gnosis. You're talking about the Archon War. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it... All those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first. Encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. <laughs> your judgment is as your existence. Unsubstantial. This is where everything ends, Boor. The god of wisdom. You should know that wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now... Come! Let us reenact a scene of the Archon War. Gather! Perish! <laughs> Turn! Huh. Stabilize. Feeble human. My command, you shall fall. Significant past. Stabilize. This is order. Feeble human. I swear by my sword. Command, you shall fall. <laughs> 
stabilize. Insignificant past. Solidify. I will have order. This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? <laughs> just concluded the 168th loop. Did you know that in the effort to create you, the people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles? The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? Huh? Come, Traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <gasps> All that battle experience! It's more than that. 
compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them... ...to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Tricks won't save you. Are you done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you. The first sage. A fool. I am the all-knowing god! To oh, oblivion! Oh, oh. Oh. The Temple of Wisdom! Kneel! Here's time to go! This is order! You filth! Your new god awakens! The day has finally come! Now, your eyes have been opened. Useless, boring. 
reality is pain. Stabilize. Commit it to memory. Humans. Filthy humans. That's mine! Don't even try! I'll never! I'll never go back! haven't yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Ermansoul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadavata. Huh? This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. Imagined. Yes, that is our destination. But I didn't expect the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadavata to be as polluted as this. Forbidden knowledge? It seems you know about a concept that even I don't completely understand. Could you tell me what you know? Hmm, your inference seems logical enough. Forbidden knowledge once polluted the desert thousands of years ago, but was successfully repelled thanks to King Deshret's self-sacrifice. Then, a second instance of forbidden knowledge pollution occurred during the- But I'm afraid it is much more serious this time. So, if we're in the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadvata, and it's also been affected by forbidden knowledge pollution, then does that mean- in order to save us, Greater Lord Rukadavata? Yes. It's very possible that she sacrificed her life in the fight against forbidden knowledge. She didn't completely eradicate forbidden knowledge, but if it weren't for her actions, the pollution would have been far more rampant over these past 500 years. The way that everyone, including me, has forgotten everything about forbidden knowledge may very well be due to her restoration of Erm... <laughs> I'm just uh, sharing her pain. The pollution of her consciousness here is severe. There is madness, chaos, and pain all around us. Did she fight to resist the forbidden knowledge pollution in such terrible conditions? She even used her last remnant of lucid consciousness to leave a clue for us to follow. Yes. Her words were distorted by forbidden knowledge, so that's all we could hear. But now, we have a chance to find the answer to this mystery. We can cross the polluted consciousness until we found the right path to meet- And then, we'll let Greater Lord Rukadavata tell us the truth in person. Each of us need to be mindful of the state of our own consciousness while we are here. Even with the Gnosis' protection, we must always keep a clear mind. <sighs> That's so scary! 
Don't worry. It should be easy enough for you to keep that mind of yours clear, Paimon. Consciousness, which symbolizes reason here. Its course is the direction our consciousness is traveling towards. If we lose control over our consciousness, we will fall into madness. So let's make sure the boat stays on course. Solidify! This is order! Direction. Are we still going the right way, Nahida? Mm hmm. Judging from the current route, the boat of consciousness will soon take us out of here.
will be arriving at our destination soon. How are you feeling? Are your minds still intact? Huh? But everything- Hopefully there won't be any more interruptions. This time, we should be able to meet Greater Lord Ru- Are you saying you've never met Greater Lord Ru- No. It seems that my birth and her death took place at the same time. Otherwise, I think she would have given me a little more guidance. And I could have done a better job. Hey! You've done a great job, Nahida! Let's get out of this creepy place and go meet her! So, is this the place you were talking about? The base of Ermansoul? Well, this is the place. I... We're here to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata, but the one standing over there is... Is that... Mm -hmm. She looks exactly like me. Are you Greater Lord Ruka Devata? Yes, that's me. Are you surprised by my appearance? Soul and the surrounding lands have been reproduced here as they were years ago. But this is just a realm of consciousness. We are manifestations of the same nature. Hence why we would appear exactly the same. Hmm? We are of the same nature? Because you are me, and I am you. You are me in the new samsara. The new samsara? As Greater Lord Rukadevata, I'm the avatar of Ermansoul. And you are the purest branch snapped from Ermansoul. Imagine it this way. Even if a tree dies, its branches will eventually take root and grow, continuing the tree's life in another form. I'm merely the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata. The real me has presumably died a long time ago. Judging from your appearance, I've probably been dead for 500 years. But you're finally here. My new self in the samsara. If this is true, then am I going to be a great archon like you someday? Though we share the same nature, our fates are bound to be different. All things have their own fate. When a branch grows into a mature tree, it won't be the same as the original tree. That's why fate is the ultimate knowledge, isn't it? That's a great insight. Yes, very good. It's also precisely why you won't become like me. <sighs> but perhaps you may become an even greater Archon than I. I already see a determination in you that I didn't possess in my time, along with the blessings from your past experiences. Don't worry. The growth of wisdom is like that of a plant. You only need to wait quietly for the flower to bloom. Come to think of it, the sages never had the faintest inkling of the meaning of wisdom. Thank you. Nothing makes me happier than discovering that the Archon I always admired was in fact myself in another fate. It's so nice to speak with you, Greater Lord Rukadevata. I've always wanted to meet you. The feeling is mutual. From the moment I snapped the branch off Ermansoul and created you, I've also looked forward to talking with you. Could you tell me why you wanted to create me? And what exactly happened when you died? Ah, I see. You're here seeking answers, right? Everything that day, even the sky itself, changed into a color like this. At that time, the Seven were all summoned to the nation of Conria. 
except for me. I had a more important task to attend to. I had to protect Erminsoul. The disaster occurred together with the pollution of forbidden knowledge. At that very moment, with my consciousness connected to Erminsoul, I sensed something was wrong. The pain started to torment my mind. Had I not repelled the pollution of forbidden knowledge with King Deshret thousands of years ago, I might have felt even more hopeless and lost. So what exactly is? It's a kind of knowledge that doesn't belong to this world, and a form of truth that can't be understood. It came from the very bottom of the abyss. Even I could never understand it. The world is constantly re If we allow forbidden knowledge to pollute Ermansoul, I'm afraid the entirety of Tavat could fall apart. So... There's knowledge that even the God of Wisdom can't understand? At that time, I knew I couldn't repel the forbidden knowledge with my strength alone. Which is why I created a device that compiled human wisdom and named it the Akasha. It's truly the world's most amazing invention. <laughs> Thank you. For a long time, I thought dreams were the fruit of human wisdom. Though it was selfish to do so, I borrowed people's dreams using the Akasha. Then I compiled their wisdom and all of my own power. Well, did it work? Thanks to the wisdom of the people of Sumeru, almost all the forbidden knowledge was cleared from Ermansul. But things didn't go as smoothly as I thought. I had a terrible headache, which gave me an uneasy feeling. And then... I remembered that my consciousness was also connected with Ermansoul. It brought me knowledge and wisdom, but vile corruption as well. From the very beginning, my existence had been polluted by the forbidden knowledge. Oh no! How could that happen? I've experienced that pain in your consciousness. It must have been a horrible experience. Yes, but my feelings weren't important. The important thing was that even if I died, my existence and everything related to me would continue to exist in Earth, and there's no way for me to eliminate myself. It would be a sort of paradox. So, I took the purest branch of Ermansoul as my incarnation in the next samsara and left a trail of clues, all in hopes that you would come here and remove me and my pollution from Ermansoul forever. Wait, no, I can't. <laughs> so you realize what that implies? You are very smart indeed. Ermansoul has all the knowledge and memories of this world. And as you've realized just now, removing me from Ermansoul means I essentially will never have existed in this world, but... This is the only way to save Ermansoul. People love you so much and... And they've missed you so much over the past 500 years. How can we just... Forget you like this? Is there really no other way? There must be something else I can do. You are the god of wisdom, Boor. You should know that there is no other way. But this... This is so cruel. No need to feel so sad, Boor. As someone who delights in wisdom, you should feel joy at finally finding the answer. These are the words in their entirety. The answer you've been seeking all along. Let the world completely forget me. We all nestle under the great tree of wisdom, peering out to perceive the world. From the earth, and from the rain, we perceive its wonders, until we become a white bird to perch atop a branch, and finally snap off the most important leaf. Once upon a time, I alone dreamed in this world. In my dreams, everybody would also dream after they fell asleep. Wild and wonderful thoughts would emerge from their minds. Some tumbled to the ground, 
and others floated to the sky. Connecting all things in the world into one dazzling net. Among a plethora of worlds were numerous smaller worlds, all of fate, finding within the tapestry their brilliant glow. I gradually understood that these indescribable and constantly changing things are the most profound things in the world. Only they can completely repel the madness. Only dreams can awaken consciousness from the deepest darkness. I'm the one who posed this question, yet also the one who sought a solution. Saving the world with the dreams of the people used to be my answer. And now, you've also found your own answer, and I shall return all the dreams to the people. Goodbye, people of Sumeru. May you be blessed tonight with the sweetest of dreams. <laughs> I'm alright. I'm just a little confused. We've just saved the world, right? So I... Why am I crying? I don't know where this feeling inside of me is coming from. But I feel very sad. Just now, we used the power of two Gnosis to successfully connect with the Ermin Soul Consciousness from 500 years ago. Then, we removed the remaining pollution from Ermin Soul. Yeah, what's wrong? Weren't you there just now? Sound. Traveler! I've been waiting here far too long, but finally I have the chance to be alone with you. All the precious time I wasted has finally paid off. The Doctor! What have you done? Just a type of sound wave that can quickly put defenseless people into a dream. As I expected, it doesn't have any effect on gods. This is the only thing of interest I found among the Sage's research. I thought I'd take it for a little... spin. Don't worry. I know you would never forgive me if I actually killed them. I'm here to negotiate with you. Naturally, I won't do anything dangerous that could potentially damage our relationship. Negotiate with me? I heard you had already left Sumeru. Why are you here again now? I left Sumeru, but I also stayed in Sumeru. Even the God of Wisdom is restricted by the habits of cognition. How disappointing. You mean... there are many different versions of you in this world? An astute guess. Even the same individual will have different cognitions at different ages. A long time ago, I made a major decision in hopes of preserving all my perspectives of how I observed the world. Observation is the first step of any experiment, 
But observing the current world doesn't satisfy me. It lacks an important dimension, that of time. So I saved segments of all my ages and made them into independent individuals. That's all there is to it. Indulge me. How does the God of Wisdom find my method of seeking knowledge? It's an insult to the very concept of life. Life inherently has many rules and restrictions, each with its own significance and reason to exist. They can't be broken on a whim. <laughs> Good. Amazing, even. Indeed, it's difficult for humans to make peace with themselves. Not to mention oneself from a different period. Since you're in the Academia, why wait until now to show up? You could very well have stopped us and helped that fake god. Simple. Let me ask you this. Would any staff member ever help the subject in the middle of an experiment? It was my experiment. So why should I interfere with the results? The Academia saw the plan to create a god as their ultimate goal. Yet you only saw it as an ordinary experiment. You... you really are crazy. If the experiment succeeded, you would have had a new god on your hands. How would you have faced your own god then? Would you still take the same stance? Would you still hold the same view of yourself? I'm first and foremost a scholar. These results should be left to the judgment of the hypothetical me confronted with that outcome. But you're right. And that's exactly why I'm disappointed with the conclusion of this experiment. As an individual, you don't have any sense of belonging. You seem to have even fewer convictions than a typical scholar. Oh no, I certainly have my own convictions. They just don't fit your standards, that's all. All right, that's enough conversation for today. The experiment is over and it's time to tidy up the equipment and reclaim any useful materials. For example, the Gnosis. <laughs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, you're an intelligent Archon. I'm sure you understand the disparity in our combat abilities at this time. Besides, you have no way to use that Electronosis in battle. Didn't you say you were here to negotiate with me? Somehow, it's starting to seem like you intend to take it by force now. <laughs> I'm merely stating a fact. After all, I'm also a scholar. Naturally, I hope to show proper respect and dignity to the God of Wisdom. Your hypocrisy is built on absolute confidence. I understand your scheme, but... What if I were to destroy the Gnosis now and awaken the Heavenly Principles? Awaken... the Heavenly Principles? Hmm... Do you think that's really possible? The Heavenly Principles have been silent for many years, but the Gnosis are symbols of their control over Tevat and all the laws. Will the destruction of a Gnosis attract the attention of the Heavenly Principles? And if so, how do the Fatui plan to deal with the consequences? Do you dare to gamble such a possibility with me? <laughs> gamble? How surprising. I thought you would show evidence or use rigorous reasoning to prove your point. The word gamble is the last thing I expected to hear from the God of Wisdom. But this is a clever move. You must have seen through me when I first captured your consciousness. As a scholar, I respect all possibilities. This has always been my principle and is an essential trait as an experimenter. Indeed, I can't ignore this possibility. So This foreign Gnosis will only lead to disaster if it stays in Sumeru. But this Electronosis is the prize I obtained after defeating one of your fellow Harbingers. Now, as the one who initiated this cascade of events, Shouldn't you pay the corresponding price? Price? Interesting. What price would you have me pay? How about erasing all your other segments? <laughs> so this is how you wish to restrict me, the most threatening opponent of the Nation of Wisdom. 
What you request of me is like plucking out the eyes I have placed in the dimension of time. Segments are extraordinarily difficult to make. They require extremely rare resources and enormous amounts of time and effort, requiring me to destroy them all here and now. Bravo. A suitably wise decision on your part. Yes, how very interesting. Can I assume that you have long been wary of me? Among all the versions of me, this segment you see now is the most selfish. If it weren't me, your idea wouldn't have worked. What did you see when you were imprisoned? You were observing me, and that's how you know I've long grown tired of their doubts and endless arguments. Like you said, it's difficult to make peace with yourself. Being as smart as you are, have you managed to do that? Hmm. <laughs> I see. If you think all those versions of me are worth a gnosis, then deal. You sure didn't hesitate much. Is the relationship between all the versions of you really that bad? I don't think there's any need to dwell on that. The surplus versions of me can be exchanged for a gnosis. Do you think anyone can offer themselves at a higher price? Besides, with my abilities, it's only a matter of time until I find better perspectives. Perhaps it's best to say you're just temporarily ahead. But what I'd like to know is... How I can see your remaining honesty. <laughs> What a ridiculous decision! Sheer you can't be serious! How could I have been you so short-sighted? You think this is the end? Self. Wait, I'll have my revenge! Wait. You'll make Good this riddance. moment count. You... you will regret this! Well, have you confirmed that it's complete? Here, take it. The future of Sumeru City will be in my hands alone. I will shut down the Akasha and let curiosity and the thirst for knowledge drive the realm of academics once again. There won't be any further gaps for you to exploit. It truly pains me that my academic achievements have never been appreciated in my homeland. Of course, I have no interest in being rejected by this city for a third time. Another chess piece. And where is your dendronosis? Don't be greedy, Harbinger of Snezhnaya. No, this is a different transaction. If you intend to turn off the Akasha anyway, then there's no further use for the Gnosis of Sumeru, is there? Besides, isn't it the Archon's duty to deliver what's desired of the Seeker? Oh, judging from your expression, you don't seem to find the idea very agreeable. Then let's think of it this way. Since you're the god of wisdom, how about I exchange some knowledge with you? People exchanging knowledge with the god of wisdom is the stuff of legends. Yet here you wish to exchange knowledge for the god of wisdom's property. Arrogant as that is, it has piqued my interest. Let me ask you. Have you, in all your mighty knowledge, ever heard the rumor that the skies of Tevat are fake. Huh? That's the secret hidden by Ermin's soul concerning the truth of this world. Once I finish telling you about this, it will be time for me to say goodbye. With negotiations, we've all gotten what we wanted. I'm very glad I got to meet you like this. Your arrogance may know no bounds, and convictions may mean nothing to you. But I'll still listen to what you have to say.
Okay. Wake him up. Are you awake? Kali says it's time for breakfast. Come on, get up! Good morning! How are you feeling today? Good to hear. It looks like we've recovered pretty well. Not even Tainari could stop us from going out now, right? You're awake. Yep, yep. I prepared some breakfast today. Please have a taste. <sighs> it's nice to have you here so we can eat something yummy. Well, now that I've recovered from Alizar, I'm feeling better than ever. And Paima bets they're all delicious. Oh, by the way, someone brought a letter for you after you went to sleep last night. Nope. Paima wanted to read the letter. Oh, it's from Milu! Ahem. <clears throat> We're going to hold a feast at the Grand Bazaar and celebrate Sino's reinstatement as the General Mahamatra. As heroes of Sumeru, please be sure to attend. Oh, I've also heard that you've become heroes here as well. That's amazing. Sometimes I'm really envious of strong and confident people like you. Oh, <laughs> you're embarrassing me. <laughs> Anyway, let's go to the Grand Bazaar to have a look. Oh, before you leave, be sure to inform Master Tainari. Huh. Tainari! Good morning. How do you feel today? We feel much better. How about you? I'm recovering well. Thanks for asking. But from the looks of it, you seem to be already busy with work again. It's fine. I'm not that busy, really. The Elazar patients have recovered, as well as Hapasia. For now, I only need to tend to my Forest Watcher duties. It seems once Erminsul started getting better, everything else started to recover, too. Yes, but there are still some residual effects. The withering is one example. Though it won't spread anymore, the existing zones won't just disappear. We Forest Rangers will still need to do the work. By the way, we have some good news. So <laughs> this news is hardly new. He had already mentioned it to me. Huh? You mean he was already here? Why didn't he come to say hi to us? He visited once, but he was afraid of disturbing you while you were resting. He just asked me a few questions and left. Then you probably already know all about the celebration feast. Celebration feast? No, I haven't heard anything about that. Huh? But didn't Milo say in her letter that they would celebrate Sino? He didn't tell you? Hmm. Perhaps, or alternatively, he doesn't know about it either. Uh, come to think of it, Sino doesn't seem like the type who'd enjoy a celebration feast. You and Kale are both Sino's close friends. Why don't you come to the feast with us? Kale has taken over some of my tasks these days. I don't think she'll have time for it. Not to mention me. You see, some VIPs have come to the forest recently. Huh? Well, technically speaking, they are former VIPs. The sages involved in recent incidents have begun their training in the Avidya Forest, and the people they had previously imprisoned have all been released. Huh? Yes, he's a little weak, but he isn't injured and his condition is stable. Lesser Lord Kusanali and her boundless mercy has decided to spare Azar and the other wrongdoers. When they learned that Lesser Lord Kusanali had defeated the Balladeer and saved Ermensoul, they were shocked at first but also became happy. As a result, work has increased for the forest rangers. That sounds really exhausting. There's nothing we can do, really. But that's another topic. Ah, right! You've recovered well. Yay!
Useless. <laughs> Well, there won't be any problems if the feast starts at that time. Mr. Zubair, I finished telling things up here. What? <sighs> Is a simple reply really that much to ask of our guests? Oh, it'll be fine. Besides, it never hurts to get things ready in advance. <laughs> uh, hey, Milu! Traveler, hi, Mon. I got your letters, so here we are! You're the best. The other guests haven't even replied yet. Huh? Are we the only ones that have- Yeah. I had someone deliver letters to all of our guests. But maybe everyone is still busy with other things. Look, I get it. Sumeru is in an extremely important period of transition right now, but even if your friends are important figures, they shouldn't just ignore your rec- Nilu is Sumeru's number one celebrity after all. <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am to talk to people with good taste! If you consider enjoying Milu's dances having good taste, then almost everybody has good taste, because Paimon thinks everybody will love her per- That's right. We all think she's amazing, too. Milu is an absolute favorite among Master Zubair. Let's have a vote for the most outstanding audience members next time. Nonsense! It is not for us to determine. But, indeed, we could try giving gifts to people with particularly good taste. Ooh, good idea. Uh, I don't want you giving pictures of me to everyone. There's always a lot going on at the Grand Bazaar. Yeah, and that's why I love it here. Traveler and Paimon, could you help con- If for some reason they didn't receive the letters, then please tell everyone that there will be a feast here. We can also check out how everything in Sumeru is going now. Hmm. When I wrote the letters, I heard that Dia was in Port Ormos. As for Sino, we've only heard that he appears at the Academia from time to time. I'm not too sure about Rahman's whereabouts. As for Dunyarzad, I just hope she's feeling better. Okay, got it. Let's go, Traveler. Seen all hate them anywhere. Uh, what's this? <clears throat> hey there, have you seen all hate them around? Yes, it seems Scribe Al Haytham has gone to the house of Dana, but you're already the second group of people I've seen looking for him today. He must be quite the busy man. Oh, who else was looking for him? Mr. Cave was just here asking about him. Don't tell me everyone's here looking for gossip about the sages. No way! We're strictly here on business. <laughs> ah, I see. 
Sorry, I thought maybe everyone's as interested in rumors about the sages as I. Should be around here somewhere, right? Oh, he's over there! But it looks just put down that worthless book and tell me what happened in the academia. This is not just some worthless book. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to find a physical book like this in Sumeru? It doesn't matter. It's probably just another thing that you used your authority to get your hands on anyway. Just put it aside. Oh. You sound surprised. I thought you would already know the inside story. Would I be here asking you if I knew? You're the scribe, not me. Well, I almost became a sage. Huh? Oh, don't sound too surprised now. You're the renowned Kave. Hmm. Why do I feel like you don't really mean it? Huh. What makes you say that? Maybe it's because you've never said anything good about me before. Yeah, well, I share a similar sentiment, and anyone who knows you as well as I do would surely do the same. Oh, you... see? This is why I hate discussing anything with you. <laughs> it seems that you really can't stand my personality. Ha! <laughs> what was your first clue? Well, then you might as well move out of my house. Are you threatening me? Stooping to a new low, I... S Ugh. And don't change the subject! You, a sage? What a joke. The Academia might as well just close tomorrow. Are they... having a fight? <sighs> Forget what's going on with the Academia. Haven't you been busy with your construction project? Don't get me started! I get angry just thinking about it. So, what great building did our master architect work on this time? Like I need to tell you. Keep your nose out of my business. No, I think we deserve to know. Where were you when Sumeru needed you most? I was in the desert for a large project, but considering Haravatat's utter ignorance of architectural and aesthetic matters, you probably wouldn't understand. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. I can only pity the man who doesn't understand the first thing about beauty and romance. Hold on, uh, wait a second. What do you mean by when Sumeru needed me most? Well, while you were out fiddling around in the desert, many people came together to save Sumeru from a crisis. Ha! And you think- Look, all you really need to know is that Azar and all his accomplices have all been overthrown. Huh? What nonsense are you talking? <laughs> it's no skin off my nose if you don't believe me. It's not like my Darshan was the one trying to apply for fun- You know what? I'll ask around. I'm sure someone knows what's going on here. You're dead if I find out you're lying to me. Oh, it's you two. What's the matter? We're running some errands for Nilu. Have you received your letter? Letter? Nilu said she sent out a letter inviting everyone to a celebration feast in two days at the Grand Bazaar. We'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. If she addressed the letter to all Haytham of the Academia, then the letter should have gone to my office. I've been busy these days, so I haven't had time to check for any new mail at my office. Have you always been so busy with your work? Of course not. I'm only busy these days because several sages have been dismissed recently and the- Kainari told us they all went to train in the Avidia Forest. That is already the best possible ending for the likes of them. Four of the six great sages were possessed by their desire for power and attempted to create a new god. In order to pull it off, they even imprisoned the other two rational sages. To imagine such things could take place in the Academia. Yeah, you're right. Huh. Feels kind of strange to hear them called that after all this time. Yes, 
At least, that's how they're supposed to sound. It's said that when the Academia was first founded, the Dendro Archon herself established the six great schools, each representing one of the six different types of wisdom. Numerous Darshans have sprung up and faded. Only the six Darshans attaching themselves to the six great schools have stood the test of time and obtained permanent seats in the Academia. Now, the six Darshans are nearly synonymous with the six great schools, and the leaders selected for the schools are the six great sages. Among the six great sages, there is one central leader, the Grand Sage. Unfortunately, only the sages from Vahumana and Amorta remain now. They were imprisoned for opposing Azar and were only rescued after Azar's downfall. So who's managing things in the other four schools now? Yes. Normally, new sages are selected based on a strict set of criteria. Oh, didn't you just say something about becoming a sage? If they pick you, then we'd have a huge connection in Sumeru. Yes, about that. <clears throat> You didn't let me finish my sentence. The person in charge of personnel affairs nominated me to be the Grand Sage in place of Azar and help Lesser Lord Kusanali manage the Academia. But I refused. Huh? But why? Ugh, can't you be a little more ambitious? I'm not even interested in being one of the six great sages. Like I said before, I don't like being a leader. Oh, all right. <sighs> so are you busy these days? Trying to find others to take the job? That's not my job either. I'm only responsible for handling important affairs within the academia before the new sages take office. <laughs> and the first thing I'll do is reject Kasharawar's application for funding. By the way, who was that other person just now? Do we look like friends? Paimon doesn't know. That's why Paimon's asking. His name is Kave, my roommate. You could say he's the representative for Ksharwar Scholar, which is exactly why he always has so many problems. So everything that's happened recently must be a huge change for the people of Sumeru. Such is the work of the Ak- Well, anyway, no matter how busy you are, since you are our planner, remember to attend the celebration feast- All right, I'll see you there. This is poor Ormos. Hmm. Now where could you... Is that Paimon I hear? Huh? Oh, it's been a while. How are you doing? Dinyarzad! It's been so long since we've seen you! I'm doing well. I can go as far as saying I have never been happier in my entire life. I don't know if you've heard, but Elazar has completely disappeared, and all the patients have recovered. Are you kidding? Knowing them and the connections they've got, I'm sure they've heard about it. Yeah! That's right. My lady is feeling better now, so I'm accompanying her for a walk. Why do you still call me that, Dia? <laughs> I guess I'm just used to calling you my lady. Resignation? You mean you're quitting? Yeah, I might start losing my edge if I keep being a bodyguard for the Homayanis. You know that my parents and I are fond of you, and that we appreciate you very much. <laughs> I'm not a woman that's easily persuaded. You should know that by now. My, when I took this job, I had already decided that I'd quit as soon as you recovered. So what are you going to do now if you're not going to be a bodyguard anymore? <laughs> I want to take a risky job and put my body to the test again. Huh? But we literally just finished one of the most dangerous jobs ever. 
I know. If I hadn't joined in that plan with you, I wouldn't have come up with this idea. I guess I still get fired up by that feeling of going all out in a fight. Life is short, and I'm happy that I got to be a part of that operation. But the whole thing also made me realize that there are still many problems in Sumeru. Well, I remember a friend had someone bring you a message. You mean I'll hate them? <laughs> I didn't expect him to still remember that. We just came from talking with all hate them at Did he tell you that he suggested that I come work at the academia? What? I heard that Azar and his cronies fell from power, and all hate them told me that now was a good time to find a job in the academia, but only if I wanted to. Whoa. Paimon can't see you being anything other than a mercenary. <laughs> me neither. Oh, but I think Dia would look great dressed up. Ugh. Ugh, forget about it. I'll hate them probably just like the way I worked and knew I'm good in a fight. But you know, if you take him up on the offer, Sino might actually agree and let you become a mantra. Because you're super amazing. <laughs> the mantra have all the talent they need as long as they have Sino. I prefer to be free to live however I choose. In fact, I chose this job from the very start because I knew it'd be right up my alley. Even if being a mercenary means facing all kinds of danger. A lion has to return to the wild sooner or later. If anything, being your bodyguard has been unfamiliar territory for- I don't want to see you go, but- I'm glad to hear you say that. Come on, no need for the sad face. It's not like we'll never meet again. Once the whole Dendro Archon thing is settled, everything in Sumeru will take a turn for the- But a peaceful society will probably mean less demand for mercenaries like me. Huh? But- wait a second! You make it sound like you're leaving now! Well, no. Not yet, at least. I promised my lady I'd stick around until next week. So, have you been in Port Ormos this entire time? We were wondering if you had received a letter from Nilu. Oh, uh, did Nilu write to us? She heard that you were seen in Port Ormos, so she sent the letter here. Huh. It was probably sent to the inn that we're staying at. My lady has been very energetic lately, and keeps taking me on hikes, staying out even into the night. By the time we get back, the receptionist is usually off napping on the job. Right, and we tend to leave quite early in the morning, so... So what it really sounds like is that the person on duty is always asleep. I bet the letter's at the reception desk. No wonder there wasn't a reply. Uh, sorry to make you two come all the way out here. It must be something important for Nilu to spe- Yes! She said they were preparing a victory feast in the Grand Bazaar. And we'll Great! I'll be sure to attend. Count me in, too. But is there some sort of dress code or anything for the feast? Can I- Since it's being organized by Nilu, I don't think she'll be too picky about- All right, then this is how I'll show up? The feast will be held in two days, so- Sure. Thank you so much for letting us know. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know where Sino and Raman are? The General Mahamatra always comes and goes without a trace. Oh. But last time we met, he mentioned that he had something to do in Aru Village. As for Raman, your guess is as good as mine. I only remember he said that he had something to discuss with Sino. Don't mention it. All right, I'm to- visited Aru village. Ah, there's Sino! Hmm. What brings you here? We recovered well, and Tanari agreed to let us leave, so now we're out and about again! It seems Kendarvaville's medical treatment is still as good as ever. Mm-hmm, and Tanari is recovering well, too! That's good to hear. You're welcome. Tainari has excellent medical skills, and Kale is quite attentive. It was the best place for you. But why are you just standing here like a dead tree? I'm meeting some people. Oh, you mean Candace? I've already talked with Candace and the village chief. 
They're still at the usual place. You can go there if you'd like to see them. But you know one of the people I'm meeting as well. Oh, by King Deshret's blessing, my friend suddenly appears in the desert. <laughs> Don't tell me you've run into trouble and need us to help now. Roman! Oh, you know? Oh, well, uh, you're pretty famous in the academia. Don't worry, these are our friends. No need to be so guarded. I see. I'm doing well. Many good things have happened recently. Same here. Really, I feel that my whole life has started to shine after- Oh, tell us everything! Yeah, you- Alright, well, I suppose I should start by saying... I've decided to leave the Academia. What? It's not that I've given up on being a scholar. Instead, you could say I've found a new identity. I will no longer pursue research like a typical scholar. <laughs> I can see what you're saying now. Uh I plan to leave the Academia and return to teach here in the desert. Wow! So you want to become a teacher? Sataria will return to support education here, and she can't teach everyone on her own, but... Yes, it's a mod that is the true meaning of education, and... The people of King Deshret suffer from sandstorms, exile, and ignorance. The stars have always guided caravans. They... No, please. Where is all of this coming? You deserve these cops. Sataria's idea will bring much good to me. At first, I feared it was death. As you know, all knowledge is under their surveillance and control. But what I heard at that time has been haunting my heart. As if there were lo- Sataria, you tread a treacherous path. Sataria, why haven't you gone home? Never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. <sighs> Miss. These words sparked something in me. I gathered up the courage to approach the Grand Sage, only to find- Azar has received much needed punishment. Though, if you ask me- Lord Sino helped me obtain permission to leave the Academia for the desert, and accompanied me here to discuss collaboration with members of the Eremites. My plan was able to go smoothly thanks to him and Ramon. You're all doing so much for the desert! Aside from that, I also have some other business to discuss with Sino. Lester Lord Kusanali has allocated many resources to support and develop the desert. I applied for a few batches of educational materials from the Academia, and sent them- That's exactly what- Apart from this, the Academia is also recruiting scholars that are willing- We must be persistent about this. This is the first time in hundreds of years we've had a glimmer of hope. Remember these words. Here lies our faithful priest, Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. I hope people with wisdom like that- Enough about us. No, not at all. Neva wanted to write to everyone, but she wasn't sure where the letters should be sent, so she asked us. A celebration feast at the feast will also be- Uh, although- Celebration? It's the first I've heard. Tainari was right. <laughs> it's rare to see that kind of expression. No, not really. Well, I still have a lot to handle here. I'm afraid I won't be able to join you. The message is, I'm sorry if you and the- Please keep- Okay, we've got all that down. Our job here is complete- Got it.
Everybody's already here. Looks like we're the last ones to arrive. I'm here. Ah, there you are. Well, look who finally decided to show up. You look like you came here immediately after finishing up some work. I'm very happy to see you here. But we're not late, are we? It's just that everyone else arrived ahead of time. I propose that the last one who arrived be put in charge of today's speeches. Nah, there won't be any speeches today. Oh, really? Well, even better. Come join us over here. Put your... Everything looks quite good. Wow. Paimon can't wait! Traveler, just look at all the delicious food here! The food was specially prepared for you by everyone in the Grand Bazaar. And we have gifts that were sent by the rest. Everyone that came said that you saved Sumeru and wanted me to thank you all on their behalf. Ah, feels kind of nice to be seen as a hero. I could get used to this. Being a bodyguard is also a hero's job. <laughs> My lady sure has a way with words. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. And I'm happy to meet everyone that participated in the great plan. Don't mention it. Come to think of it, we've really done something impressive together. We owe it to our abilities. And luck. Really? Why do I remember everybody thinking that luck was against us and feeling like we hardly had it? That's how I remember it, too. It's luck that brought us together. And it was luck that let us form a team. Moreover, judging from the results, everything worked out well. Yeah. Everyone gave it their all when it mattered most. It was almost like everyone played their part. <laughs> Thanks. So, would you say we're good actors too? It's such a blessing that Lesser Lord Kusanali was able to return to power at the Academia. Yes, even after being abandoned and neglected so many times, she's finally returned. Uh-huh. Lesser Lord Kusanali once used all her power in a great disaster, which resulted in her losing all her wisdom and memories of the past. This should be something everybody should remember. Huh? You look surprised. No, everything you said is correct. <sighs> That's good. Something wrong? Yeah, what's with that face? You knew all of this already. <clears throat> Even if those two giants of the Academia are here, I still have to say it. Those sages really have some nerve. 500 years ago, Lesser Lord Kusanali used all her power for the people of Sumeru. And what did they do in return? If you bite the hand that feeds you, don't act surprised when it turns into a knuckle sandwich, right, Sino? Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but their treatment of Lesser Lord Kusanali calls for a more severe punishment. You could simply tell Lesser Lord Kusanali that you wish to have Azar and his accomplices severely punished. I respect our deity's decision and won't interfere in any way. While we're on this topic, why didn't you accept the Academia's invitation to become the Grand Sage? Are you trying to say that I'm fit to be a sage? <laughs> Not at all. Why? Because he dethroned Azar from power? <clears throat> Could you try to put it another way? But seriously, though, I always wondered if you had some personal motives behind it. I did have my own motive, but it had nothing to do with being a sage. If the rules of our nation were suddenly cast by the wayside, then it wouldn't be long until chaos ensued. By that, you mean your life working as the Academia's scribe. Precisely. Uh, wait, is that all? So, 
that's the only reason why you joined us and came up with all those plans? It's reason enough. You've certainly got quite the personality. You flatter me. All right then. How about you? You've already resumed work as the general mo- That's right. Will you be happy? It's not about being happy. There are merely a lot- Even so. <sighs> Thank you. I seldom participate in such lively gatherings. No. This gathering today has a unique meaning. The Grand Bazaar is lively because the people here feel happiness from the bottom of their hearts. That happiness is an emotion that'll be forever alien to those bookworms who have driven them- Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh well. The atmosphere here is good. And if <laughs> I don't often come to such places. I have a lot to handle these days. <laughs> There's always next time. More f <sighs> My lady, the grilled meat over there is del- Yes! I also tried some fruit just now. What an amazing place to relax. You said it. Oh, look who else is here. Hello! Oh, I'm so happy Nilu invited everybody. Hey, less of that polite chit-chat and more eating and drinking. Very well. How is it? <laughs> that is the first time I've ever invited some. You see, every guest here is quite extraordinary. Make sure you live it up tonight. I'm honored to have her think of me this way. I can't explain why, but I just feel a late. for you to eat. You wake up once you put something yummy in. Of course. Just wait here. <laughs> it's me. Mm -hmm. You may blame me for being a bit too self-indulgent. I was thinking about talking with you, and the next thing I knew, I had made a connection with you. A connection between us is amazing. It's like flora and the fence it grows upon. I heard there's an amazing celebration feast today at the Grand Bazaar. I wanted to have a look for myself, so I snuck in. Lately, I've been so busy dealing with all the fallout from recent events, so I really haven't had any free time. Although you've already helped me with a lot, there's still one more thing I hope you can help me with. Please say thank you to everyone for me. Oh, is it... But 
If I just show up all of a sudden, people... What if I end up scaring them and ruining the... Okay. Yes, I have. You said I should go thank everyone as myself, right? So... I've decided to borrow your body for the time being. Are you awake now? Paimon was just a... It's me. Huh? That voice. Nahida? Uh, hold up. What's going on? I didn't expect to have a conversation with the consciousness of Lesser Lord Kusanali in the Grand Bazaar. Interesting. Is this also a part of the feast? No, no, of course not. Are you... Lesser... How are you? You know who I am? Yes. I already know every one of you. Nilu, I'll hate them. Sino, Dia, Paimon, and Dunyarzad. Lesser. Lord Kusanali? I took the liberty of occupying the traveler's body so that I could thank all of you in person. Thank you so much for rescuing me. Even if that meant placing your own safety in peril, and taking the risk of becoming enemies with the Academia, the Sages, the Doctor, the Balladier, and even the entirety of Sumeru. Without you, without any of you, I would have been in a much more difficult situation. Had you not helped me to resolve the crisis, not only I, but Sumeru and even the entirety of Tevat would have suffered great misfortune. People refer to you as the heroes who managed to rescue a god. Please, allow me to present to you my most sincere gratitude. Lesser Lord Kusanelli, you... You have done so much for Sumeru, and I... I, I didn't even have a chance to do anything for you. Ten years odd. The suffering you endured during your illness is... You don't need to be so ceremonious. It's always been my duty to protect you. This is how the relationship between the Academia and Dendro Archon should be. We just did what was necessary and set things back on the right path. You're an Archon, but you act so humble. You really don't need to be so... Pl I... I... Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Did you rest well? After Nahida left, you ate a lot of food. You've become a glutton. Hmm. That just means you still have a lot to learn from Master Paimon, the Sage of Gluttony. All right. Since you're awake now, should we? She should be in the Academia.
Recent events, the Akasha can no longer function as it used to. I've given it some thought, and have decided to shut it down permanently. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. The Akasha's centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, and as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. The former sages have received their punishment, but the new sages have yet to be selected. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on academics. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far- I've already taken some measures to address this. You mean, what happened after the doctor put you to sleep? Not exactly. The top-ranked Fatui Harbingers, up to number three, possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate, the Heavenly Principles. In fact, the Heavenly Principles has been quiet since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. I used this point as leverage against the Doctor. I told him that the Heavenly Principles may be awakened if I destroyed a Gnosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. I assumed that the Heavenly Principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take place. And as for what I exchanged for the Gnosis, the exchange served as both punishment for the Doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the God of Wisdom. He's still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. I know you have many misgivings about- Don't worry, I'll keep an eye- In addition, there's- His future will be determined by fate. Is that where you're headed next? Fontaine, the Nation of Justice? As far as I know, that nation operates in a judicial system. Does their Archon personally judge people? No, there's a Chief Justice in Fontaine. Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Fosalor, won't preside over individual trials. However, even then, Fosalor will still make herself present at just about every trial. As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got, uh, a very unique personality. Are you sure? Isn't there something else you haven't asked about yet? Huh? E about your sister. While you were resting at Gandarbaville, I took some time to perform an ermine soul search for information on your sister. Yeah! Isn't ermine soul a repository for all the information and memories of Tuvat? So there shouldn't be anything on him or his sister. This is true in your case. Ermin Soul indeed does not have any information on you. However, there must be something different about your sister. Because as it turns out, the world has recorded information on her after all. What? There is only one possible explanation. She belongs to this world. trip to Tevat? Hmm. According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, she began her journey through the Seven Nations of Tevat. But just as her journey was about to reach its conclusion, 
the ermine soul records on her suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean, fuzzy? Did some- All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating her fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that, who knows what else they're capable of. But even that wouldn't explain how she somehow comes from this world. Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? P Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? A very important part of the intel was about this world's Descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Traveler, you are Tavat's fourth Descender. Huh? So the Vatui count three other Descenders before the Traveler, and his sister isn't even one of them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first Descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other Descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. <sighs> Paimon's head's about to burst from all this crazy new inf- And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. I'm sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. All right, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes, and maybe I'll appear in your dream. Is there anything you want? And soon, You'll also begin your journey anew. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. I'm sure glad we got to meet you. The pleasure is all... All right, that's enough talk for today. If you... Hello, Traveler. Have you ever heard of a moment of dreams? Oh, that sounds like some kind of sweet drink. <laughs> I'm afraid not. It's the name of an event we started to hold regularly. Dreams have become quite the hot topic in Sumeru. The same goes for me. Oh, right. Everyone's able to dream again. Yes. We organized an event to give everyone with me, and thus our event, a moment of dreams with... So it's kind of like a fireside chat? <laughs> you could say that. We hear all sorts... Yeah, but to us, dreaming is as normal as breathing. Wait, but if there are free drinks and snacks... And oh, really? So you mean you've already seen... Mm -hmm. But no need to get so excited. It's... No, no, no. We need experienced participants like... Please allow me to address you two as dream experts. <laughs> now you seem interested. Rest assured, you'll find all the Wow! Sign us up! Uh, but wait, uh, Paimon's getting ahead of herself again. We should see what the Traveler did. Uh, 
Why aren't you saying anything? <laughs> All right, hurry up and take us to be dream experts. <laughs> Very good. Well, I suppose it must be accumulating knowledge and share...